Father, we thank you for your truth, for we know that your word says it. If we will continue in it, that it will make us free. Lord, this morning, that which we bring forth, that which we handle, the words of life, they are spirit and they are alive, and they indeed, God will make us free if we will receive them, if we will continue in them, if we will let them build upon truth, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, it will bring us, God, to that liberty. Oh, Father, that is a liberty that is greater than affliction, a liberty that is greater, God, in infirmity, greater, God, than captivity, greater, God, a captivity greater than captivity. God, let us be submissive to that greater captivity today and understand, Lord, that every, every, everything that you would do, Lord, is in this precious I have been the last couple of weeks uh, speaking to you. I began with redemption. I spoke to you about salvation. I want to speak to you this morning about sanctification. Understanding that redemption is that which enables you or opens you up to salvation. Salvation then is that which God delivers to you through redemption and sanctification is the process through which that salvation is received. <laughs> I told you last week that we cannot receive the promises or the virtue of God piecemeal. The promises and the virtue of God are not dispatched to you. They are God Himself made real in your life. So you cannot receive these things piecemeal. Everybody understands what I mean by that? We talked about what it means to God for you to be saved. For you or whoever. In the mind of God what does it mean to be saved? In, in Romans, the fifth chapter, messed some of you up because you are already in Genesis. <laughs> Romans, the fifth chapter, in the tenth verse, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. This word here, saved, is the word we talked about last week. And it is the word sozo, to save, deliver, protect, heal, preserve, save, do well, make whole. So it says that we are saved, delivered, protected, healed, preserved, done well, and made whole by His life. We looked at and talked about the fact that in the Old Testament, the term there, or the word there, save, in the, in the Old Testament means something saved, delivered, aided, victor victorious, prospered, Help, helping, save, salvation, save, welfare, help. In the New Testament, that same word, to save, rescue, deliver, help, salvation, save. We know in Isaiah 53, in the fifth chapter, it says that we were wounded, or he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. 
in Mark, the Gospel of Mark, in the 16th chapter of that Gospel, which we read from again last week, in the 15th verse, Go you into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Going back to the 16th verse, it said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Again, that's the word sozo. So what God is actually saying, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, that is delivered, protected, healed, preserved, done well, made whole. He that believeth. Now, my question is, in my life, in the church's life, in most every believer, if we couldn't say all, what we see, in fact, is the virtue of God delivered in a very piecemeal fashion? And I wonder why that would be so, and, and as I begin to seek the Lord, knowing He has an answer, it came to me that it says in Mark's Gospel, He that believes shall be saved. Well, now, if believing pertains to every aspect of what saving is, then that's telling me that if you believe for a spiritual salvation, you receive it. But until you believe for the fullness of salvation, you won't. If it means that you have to believe for any part of does it not also mean that you must believe for everything that pertains to that salvation? Do you follow me? If it means that I have to believe God to be born again for that birth, does it not also mean that I have to believe God for the rest of my salvation? Understanding that Salvation is exactly as everything else in God's divine order. It is exactly like creation itself. Creation is something which we read about last week that begins in another realm. It began in the mind and will of God. It began in the spiritual realm and then was manifest into what we call the natural realm. It began beyond my senses, and then was manifest by God through and to my senses. Salvation's going to move from one realm to another, just like everything else in God's order. It's going to move from beyond my senses and then to my senses as I believe. From realm to realm.